If I were to ask 10 different Pistons fans what a successful season for the team would look like, I might get 10 different answers. In this video, I'm going to list my top five predictions that I think will come to pass for the Detroit Pistons. Let's get into it. Number one, the Pistons will win 30 plus games this season. So normally, expecting a team to double their win total, regardless of any circumstance, seems a bit of a stretch. Except when that win total from the previous season is so low that it's not really that unrealistic. Aside from all the changes this offseason, and there were a lot, expecting a, let's just say, 25-1 team to double that win total by winning 50 games, that's not reasonable. But when that win total is 14, it's a totally different story. And that's when factors like coaching changes and roster turnover really come into play. We've heard from many different sources that this team should have won many more than 14 games last season. K said himself during the losing streak that they weren't 2 and 26 bad. Pistons commentator Greg Kelser said that the team was finding ways to lose and that they could have easily won twice as many games as they did. So if they could have won 28 games with their previous coach, previous roster, and previous mindset, I'm confident they can get to at least 30 games with all those things not being upgraded. Think about this too. There isn't much to really scout on this team because no one's really seen it. That means the Pistons are going to have chances to catch teams by surprise this season. The Pistons are going to win games this year based on the newness of their roster and lack of game film. Now, there's probably going to be games that they lose that they should win, but I think they'll win more of the games that they should lose than lose the games they're supposed to win. My number for the Pistons this season sits at 34 wins. Number two, Kay Cunningham will be an all-star this season. For most of Kay's career, his talent has just been simply overlooked, even locally, because of not having a proper roster around him to maximize his ability. And outside of Detroit, he's been overlooked just simply because the Pistons just haven't been a very functional basketball team. The most recent case study of this is ESPN ranking him 67th best player in the NBA. They have him three spots behind guys like Emmanuel Quickly at 64, five spots behind Contavious Caldwell Pope at 62, eight spots behind Alex Caruso at 59, nine spots behind Kobe White at 58, 10 spots behind Darius Garland at 57, 11 spots behind Derek Lively at 56, who was a rookie last season, 13 spots behind Alperen Sengun at 54, 15 spots behind Franz Wagner at 52. So disrespectful. In my opinion, Cade is better than every single player I just mentioned. When it comes to all-star voting, whether right or wrong, if you're one of the worst teams in the league, you gotta be at least a top five to 10 player just to get voted in. And let's be honest, top five players are no doubt beneficiaries of the roster construction around them. Guys like Jokic, Doncic, Giannis, Embiid, Tatum, they all have competent rosters to maximize their all-world talent, and rightfully so. This season though, Kate will finally be able to say that he has a competent roster around him. And because of that, along with the Pistons doing what I outlined in prediction number one, winning 30 plus games, that will mean that Kate will finally punch his ticket to the All-Star game. Number three, Jalen Duran will take a huge leap defensively. We all know how talented JD is. He's 20 years old and he already looks like a six foot 10 Luke Cage. The questions that most Pistons fans have about JD are about his defense. No one really questions his athleticism or his strength, especially for his age. The question has always been, can he translate that into elite paint and rim protection on a consistent basis? I believe the answer is yes. JB Bickerstaff and his staff are no strangers to developing big guys, most recently with the Cavaliers, Twin Towers, and Jared Allen and Evan Mobley. I also think that a lot of his improvement is going to manifest from just playing harder, more consistently. Now, of course, when you become a pro, you gotta be professional and show up every day, right? I get it. But I do think it's a little unfair to ask a 20 year old to come into the league and sacrifice his body every night on a team that has no direction whatsoever, which was the case last year. There is a reason we see all of our young guys who were here last year playing a little bit harder this season. All of them. They have belief now, and it starts with their coach. And I know Ben Wallace played hard every single night regardless, that's true. But Ben Wallace is one of one, man all time. Also, when Ben Wallace arrived here in Detroit, he was about to turn 26. 26 in today's NBA is considered a veteran, so big difference there as well. Last thought, JB Bickerstaff has mentioned on many occasions that he plans to utilize and involve JD more offensively. And when you're involved in the offense, it just naturally makes you want to play harder on the defensive end, especially when you have natural gifts like JD does. Think about it. Even Ben Wallace, who wasn't a great offensive player, he praised Larry Brown during their finals run for keeping him involved in the offense. So even the guys like Big Ben, four-time defensive player of the year, who made his entire career on that end, 
it still matters. Number four, Bobby Clement and Paul Reed are going to be impact players for the Pistons. We didn't get a chance to really see Bobby in the preseason, but we did get a glimpse of his ability and skill set in Summer League. Yes, it's Summer League, but sometimes you can still spot diamonds in the rough, and Bobby is just that. More than anything, what I've noticed is that he's a very smart basketball player. He reminds me of a Phoenix Suns Boris Diaw type of player, a versatile big man who can handle the ball, shoot from deep, and make the right play over and over again. He's 21 years old, so he's not your average rookie. And he's played professionally overseas for a few years, so he's coming into the NBA more polished than most rookies. You can just tell that he understands how to play the game, and his ability to spread the floor and play make for others in transition and in the half court is going to make him an impact player sooner than later for this team, maybe even before the All-Star break, if he can get and stay healthy. Let's talk about Paul Reed for a second. Paul Reed is making $15 million over the next two years. $15 million over the next two years. To put that in perspective, in 2022, the Pistons signed Marvin Bagley to a three-year, $37 million contract. That's $12.5 million a year. And Paul Reed, who is a significant upgrade over Marvin Bagley, is making roughly $4 million less than him over the next two years. $8 million a year for a player like Paul Reed in 2024-25 is an absolute bargain. I still don't get why the Sixers waived him. We all expect Tobias Harris to come in and make a huge contribution on this team, right? On and off the court. But the other ex-Philadelphia 76er is going to help this team too. His foot speed, lateral quickness, and athleticism are rare for a player his size. If you pay attention too, you can see that he's already kind of earned the respect of the other big guys like Jalen Duren and Isaiah Stewart. They've kind of gravitated towards him on and off the court. And we actually got a chance to see him and Isaiah Stewart play together and I really loved what I saw. Both physical guys who can defend the posts, protect the rim, especially Paul Reed with his athleticism, defend on the perimeter, and also spread the floor and get out in transition. Both guys can do all of those things. I think you're going to see a lot of that two big lineup off the bench and i really think paul reed is going to have a huge and surprising impact for this team finally number five Jaden ivy will finish top three in most improved player voting so there were a lot of fairweather fans last season who were clamoring for the pistons to trade Jaden ivy isaiah stewart a bunch of first rounders and a bunch of other stuff for Devin booker who remembers that as you all know i was not one of them i've been high on Jaden since purdue and he's once again being allowed to play to his strengths. Jaden's one of the fastest players in the league. He looks like Jamison Williams when he's flying up and down the court in transition. And you just can't teach that. You either have it or you don't. More importantly though, his work ethic may be his greatest skill. Every coach he's had has spoken at length about his work ethic. Whether it was Dwayne Casey, Monty Williams, who even jokingly said last season that the Pistons had to change his address to the practice facility because he lives in the gym. And then Coach Bickerstaff, who most recently was saying that the team had to pull him back off of his workouts because he was just going too hard. When you've got skills that can't be taught and a work ethic to match it, your ceiling is limitless. I've noticed too that during the preseason that he's really committed to the defensive side of the ball too. And with his measurables and athleticism, a solid jump on that end could help his case. When it comes to voting on these awards too, optics are really important. When you hear of a player drafted as high as he was, getting benched for a player who doesn't have his ability, the assumption is that the player is underachieving or that there's an off-court issue. Based on how he looks so far, it's clear that neither of those were the case, especially since he didn't give anybody anything to run with as far as his reduced role last year. Looking at his talent, where he came from last season, and all the new upgrades to this franchise as a whole, it puts him in prime position to make a huge jump from last year to this year. With that being said, I do believe that he will have the type of season that's worthy of actually winning the award next season. But having been a fan of Detroit sports for three plus decades, I just don't see the league giving us two individual awards in the same season. Now, if the Pistons were to get hot post All-Star break and sneak into the playoffs or something like that, it's a different story. Jaden could definitely change that narrative, and I hope he does, because that means that he had one hell of a season, which is not far-fetched at all. Go get him, Jay. But what do you think of my predictions? And what are yours for this coming season? Drop them down below and let's talk about it. Appreciate you hanging with your boy. And as always, Detroit versus everybody. Peace. Hotter than MTV in Y2K. You don't want to see but that Y2K. Breaking records set by Michael J. Bringing glory days back to the future, Michael J. He's way ahead of his time. He's got a plan, yeah. Fed off by none other than his brother Cannon.
Yeah, this is more than a game, it's a passion Why they see we working? Cause I'm a action Yeah, and I'll be on the way and get that put a ride Electrifying through the air, a Detroit shot And it doesn't really matter if you love him, like him, hate him That boy is 